Hello and welcome to another stream here on YouTube and Behance. My name is Anna Davis Court. I'm a children's book illustrator and I am so happy to be back with you. And guess what? We have friends in the chat. We have Kendall and Joe. Thank you so much for being here. It's so good to see you. It feels like it's been forever because it really has been. Oh, it's been a day in a million years in a day. There we go. <laughs> And Kendall, you are going live tomorrow on Adobe Live with Ryan, aren't you? I believe it's at 1230 Pacific time, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. I set an alarm on my phone, so I hopefully won't miss that. Joe, how are you? How are you doing? And when's your next APAC stream? I can plug that as well. <laughs> so happy to see you guys. Uh, <laughs> Kendall says, Joe! and also happy new year and yes 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 tomorrow okay excellent excellent i'm so excited uh two of my favorite people kendall and ryan being together just makes my heart happy and uh happy new year thank you so much for being here and also what the heck it's a new year it's 2023 already it's so weird alessandra's in the chat saying hey everyone miss you anna oh i miss you too alessandra and i am so glad to be back with everyone because seriously it's been Okay, so part of me is like, I love hermit mode and like being just alone. And then another part of me is like, dear Lord, I'm alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just these, there are two wolves in your brain and one of them saying, stay home and drink tea. And the other one's like, go see friends. <laughs> Joe says, very excited to be in the new year. APAC will be back in February. So mark your calendars. All right, marked, boom, February, APAC time. Are you on any kind of break then, Joe? Is this like a an actual vacation time? I would love for that for you. Uh, we just had in the U.S. a kind of break. It's that timey-wimey between uh, Christmas and the New Year's where people usually take that time off if they celebrate. Even if they don't, sometimes it's just like a bank holiday for the country. <laughs> and uh, I definitely took that time to just like slow the heck down. And I love it. I love slowing down, y'all. It's so nice to just feel like, okay, what am I doing today? Whatever I want. Mmm. Mmm. Good. <laughs> I want to bring that feeling to my everyday work, which brings me to, we are doing some free time artwork today. These, I intend to become Patreon postcards, so it's not necessarily like a, oh, I'm just making whatever and who cares. It's more like a, 
I have an intention for this, however, even if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's all good. I've got backup designs. I'm all good. <laughs> Dark, Dark Hour slash Joe says, uh, that's right. I'm actually on vacation time going skiing in Canada in a couple days. You're so close. You're so close. Wait, what part of Canada? Are you going to Banff? Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And also skiing when it, right now for you, it's like completely summertime. That's so cool. <laughs> Oh, I hope that you aren't too sweltering and that you're having a good old time. That being said, let's jump into the painting that we are working on today. I'm going to be working in fresco. Uh, this is being bounced to my computer. So if you have any questions about any of the setup or what I used to draw, let me know, of course. Uh, but right now I've got a million wires down here. Look at this. I've got it plugged in and then it's overlapping with my, my headphone wires. It's just like, what's going on? Uh, and... You can see this is what it looks like on my screen. Ooh, ah, the idea for this one is, as Joe says, fishy, <laughs> fishy. Why are you sleeping? <laughs> Ooh, Dark Guy says flying over to Whistler, Vancouver. The cold cannot come soon enough. Okay, you gotta just drive down like seven hours to see me, cause you're so close. You're so much closer than you usually are. <laughs> No, that is super exciting. I hope that you enjoy the heck out of all the snow. Are you a skier? Do you know how to ski? Or is this like a first time thing? What do you do? I have never been skiing or snowboarding or anything. It's funny because Ryan just got back from snowboarding in Colorado. So apparently everybody is just like snow people. <laughs> snow people. <laughs> Uh, Judy Felix or Jude Felix uh, says, sorry to ask, what's the name of the software, ma'am? This is Adobe Fresco that I am using. Uh, it is a mobile drawing app on the iPad and well, I should say drawing or painting. It is one of my favorites, if not my favorite program right now. I love the textures of the brushes so much and it becomes very intuitive. Like it takes, I'd say on average, if you're learning a new program around two weeks to learn, I'd say Fresco takes a week to get used to, honestly. It's so intuitive. Uh, and yeah, I, I love it. Um, Dark Hour says, so far, yet so close. I know, right? It's just like right there <laughs> uh this is adobe fresco to jude thank you so much and also i am a skier at heart but i've dabbled in snowboarding so you're all around the snow sports that's very cool i have uh mount hood is right next to us whoops my uh thing came un unplugged so um I'm right next to Mount Hood, but all I've ever done is this one time, the one time my family brought us out to a Mount Hood when we were kids and I inner tubed <laughs> down a hill. <laughs> Does that count as a snow sport? I'm like a pro now. <laughs> okay, so let me show you a little bit around this piece. So we've got a sketch that I worked up from Nutton. Uh, I'm gonna select all these, select multiple, beep, beep, bop, boop, beep and just show you the sketch for a sec. I really love the idea of playing with scale. This is something that I find in a lot of the pieces that I love and collect, but also just in the imaginary land of things, I find scale to be so enticing whenever I look at a piece. It's just like, ooh, that thing is either supposed to be really big and it's really small, or it's supposed to be small and it's really big. I love those things. Um, and I was thinking about, Animal Crossing. We love Animal Crossing around here. We're the the folks that cross. <laughs> and uh, so in that game, you can catch a, a fish called an arowana. We've talked about it on the stream. I love that fish. It looks so, so good. And so what I wanted to do was kind of get the feeling of when you're standing in the aquarium next to that fish, it's so large. And these things do get really, really big in the wild. Um, but I wanted to make it ridiculously big. See our little character down here? That's what I mean by scale. You have to have something next to something to show scale. It's like, here's an itty bitty person. Here's a massive elephant. Like, it's just... But uh, Lee, my teacher slash mentor, always called it the pineapple in the city, uh, where he would take a pineapple and make it the size of the city building. And once you put it on that scale, it's like instantly interesting it adds such an x factor to a piece and a question in the mind of like what's going on that's not usual <laughs> so anyways i love that 
So that's what we're going to play with today. Anthony Jackson says scale or scale. <laughs> I mean like the size scale, but there's also fish scales. So all just yes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. Joe says skiing is the closest I ever get to flying with my body <laughs> instead of an airplane. Oh, really? But you're you're flying all over the place with airplanes right now. I mean, how else, how else would you get to Canada? Uh, also, I have to say, I just adore the leafy botanical background you have. It's so good. Are you talking about the this background? The the one? I don't know if you can see my cursor, but <laughs> above my head here. <laughs> That one was also for uh, Patreon. The digital tier gets this as a background, and then the uh, physical tier is going to get it as a postcard as well. So fun stuff all around. I love it as well. Actually, I love it so much that I took some of the um, leaves that I painted for this background and I painted them onto little cardboard pieces in real life to make like 3D leaves. I still don't know exactly what to do with them right now. They're just kind of like I tape them to a shelf so it looks like leaves are falling, but I'll find a really good use for them someday. Let's see here. The candle says yes to Animal Crossing and also I want to do an island reset this month and just rebuild everything. I can't decide if I just want to flatten the island or clear data though. <gasps> That's crazy, Kendall, but also I'm here for it. Do do what's best for you. <laughs> Jessica T says, do you wanna or wanna? <laughs> I like it. I like your energy. Kendall says, I feel like I should just flatten and get rid of everything and it'll be a ton of rebuilding. Oh, that's so crazy. And Dark giving uh, Joe some ideas saying, honestly, a fresh start sounds really enticing. Uh, Elizondra says, I cross with animals all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly. You're crossing in real life, all the stuff. Uh, the stream setup, background. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Oh yeah, Anna, I need help. I want to finally launch my Patreon this year. Yes, Kendall, get it. Yes. Okay. And I've only been procrastinating for the last couple years. Hey man, if it takes you five years, it's fine. <laughs> as long as it gets done sometime, right? Because, oh yeah, you should have a Patreon. Uh, yeah, we could totally talk about it. I here or off stream, whatever, because that is uh, something I have accrued a fair bit of knowledge. I'm not gonna say it's applicable to everyone, but uh, definitely a really cool thing to talk about. Joe says I did the cardboard thing and made magnets for my fridge. That is so cool. I'm so glad. Uh, also, can we get a picture of that in the Discord? Because I would love to see it. Jessica t says, "Wow, arowanas are so pretty." I'm now seeing a picture of one with a vibrant red color. Oh, they come in so many good colors and patterns. It was really hard to choose for this piece. So um, these are the colors that I ended up going with. And they were honestly very inspired by some of my Pinterest favorites. <laughs> like I would look at all the pictures that I have saved as inspiration and just pull from some of the colors in there. Uh, I should show you actually the specific one I was looking at because it has such a vibe and I don't want to lose that kind of inspiration as we go. Also, I'm definitely going to need some reference uh, for fish as I go. Because <laughs> I definitely want to, I want to shape design this. Like right now, I feel like it's somewhat naturalistic in its design. Like it, it feels like I drew a fish from life rather than designing a fish to fit what I want the look to be. So that's always a point I reach in some pieces where it's like, oh, it's not shape designed enough for me. Uh, so I just have to back up and redo a little bit. Okay, I think it was in color and light. Here, let me show you a Z Pinterest board. This one. Zoom. Rhythm of green. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so you can see right here in the, the green water down here, there's this yellow fish in the bottom right. And that's really where I'm pulling some of this color inspo from because it feels exactly right to me. My greens right now, it seems like are uh, tending a little more bluish, which I'm not against, but I also want to remember this inspo so that I don't drift too far away. Uh, all right, let's do it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Joe says, picture for Discord as we speak. Oh, I love it. Uh, yes, we can post and paint along. You could really post it anywhere. <laughs> Joe says, okay, chat, I think we got to let Anna draw. I know I'm a hypocrite, but I need to see the goodness. <laughs> you know, I will draw when I want to. No, <laughs> I <don't> want to. <laughs> 
I think that uh, I I could get into chat all day long. It's just so good to see you guys. I don't mind talking. But um, okay, so I'm gonna get into drawing as well. You know, I think it's a lot more blue on my my Cintiq screen, but on my uh, iPad screen, it's more greenish. Here, let's do a little comparison. Well, it also looks kind of bluer on there too, but I promise in life, this looks very like it's a desaturated green. Uh, there are many greens in it though. Okay, so what I'm gonna do actually first is what I said I was gonna do, which is redesign the fishy fish a little bit. So we might have to pull up some reference, but I also kind of want to just go with the vibe because every once in a while, I feel like reference can pull you a little bit too far towards the uh, naturalistic side. However, we don't have to just pull up reference of the fishy. Uh, one thing we can do is go back to this Pinterest board and pick up reference for stylized fish. That's always a good call because then you can see how they they pick up like different types of shapes and fins that can all kind of they they're obviously fish. You can even tell sometimes what type of fish they're going for, but they're also really strong shapes, and that's the idea. It's kind of like caricature, but for animals. <laughs> all right, so now that we've got that in our head, now let's design a little bit. So if we have this big long what would you call this shape uh, a jojo <laughs> a potato wedge <laughs> we can simplify this a little bit more i want to elongate a little bit and i also want to add some flow so it doesn't feel like it's just a completely flat completely sharp shape i want it to feel like it's swimming one of my favorite things, if you Google arowana and you see them, is when they are, what do you call it? Like their body is in a S shape of some sort when they're bending and it's not just the flat sideways uh, shot of them, but like when they're actually swimming, it's so beautiful. It reminds me of beta fish a little bit because betas are just majestical. Okay, so for some shapes, I kind of want to do... Again, I want to contribute to the flow, so I think what I'm going to do is have this kind of flip up as if this guy is swimming down and then up again. And then we've got this fin along the top. And this guy can kind of stay the same, I think. I think this fin is pretty good. And then we've got two bottom guys down here going whoop whoop, and then a little bit of a <laughs> I like it, I like it. And these guys even have like a little, um, oops. There's a, a thing on their lip that sticks out that I saw in the reference, but I don't really want to add it. <laughs> I don't think they have it in the Animal Crossing version either, so I take creative liberty. Ha ha, I take it, it's mine. <laughs> and then uh, one of the things that I don't want to lose is that around here on their body, their scales seem to be biggest. And then they have like a little head area that's not scaly. Um, so it's like small, biggest, small again with their scales. And what I love about their scales is it's not necessarily, if you're looking at like a pattern scale effect, there's scales that go like this and they kind of the, the points at which they join are butt up, butted up against each other. But what I was noticing when I was looking at reference of arowanas is that usually there's a gap. So right here is the gap where like those little C's that connect, they don't connect in the middle. They connect outside the middle. Do you understand what I'm saying? So overall, when that continues, when all these shapes continue, it creates a little bit of a different overall shape. Here, let me try to create enough of these that you understand. So the overall shapes here, like say if you were to create a stamp of these scales, the shape of this one would be like this. And if you were to create a stamp of these scales, it would be like this. I don't know. It's the small details that make me feel like 
you understand a little bit more about the reference and are really imbuing yourself with like the shape language of it. So that's just one of those little things that I want to definitely carry through to the final design. I think this already has a ton more flow than this guy. He feels a little less stagnant. Um, one thing I do want to make sure of, though, is that I don't lose the scale of the actual fish in uh, in the fin sizes. Like, the fins might be a little off. So what I'm thinking is the tail. The tail might need to be a little smaller. Because these guys don't have really beefy tails. They kind of have smaller ones. <laughs> D. Ross in the chat, what's up? How are you? Ah! Uh, Dee saying, your drawings are pretty cool. Oh, thank you very much. Also, Jessica is throwing out the idea of a holographic sheen. Oh my gosh. Uh, I actually saved some images on my phone. Let me show you. That I just happened to see today. And it felt like, was it serendipity? <laughs> Aww. Uh, Joe says, it's a lovely, wholesome slice of the internet. I know you'll love it. Contribute to the flow? What is this? An apple slice? Oh, an apple slice is a good idea. Okay, so, um, wait, hold on. I'm gonna look at these, or show you these pictures, and then I'm gonna look at what Joe posted to the Discord. Oh, they're gonna be so hard to see. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, this is one of the pictures. Do you see? They're like, just like I was saying, the little scale shapes almost. And then over here, there's like a little pattern of diamonds. And they have these different colors to each, which I definitely think is the key to the iridescent feel, is having just different colors on each. And then same artist, look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. Look at those scales. Okay, so these scales almost feel like coins. They're so shiny. And the way that's achieved, I think, is a lot due to the differing colors, but also the values shown here. See how the darker parts kind of just blend together? But then once the light hits them, they change all over the place. Change. Heh. <laughs> you get it? Pun. Um, okay, so I, I can't remember the name of this artist. Is there any info on that? Let's see. Save term from Twitter. Uh, I'll have to do a reverse image search at some point. Um, but anyways, yes, they were amazing, this artist, and loved their work, and I thought it was just perfect that I came across that when I did. Okay, um, let's check out the Discord real quick. Ch -ch -ch, paint along. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Exclusive from my maximalist fridge and some of the magnets decor decors that I made. Oh. Look at these cuties! Ah, oh, I love them. This is so perfect for your artwork too. Also, what? You just got like <laughs> chaotic bobbles and <laughs> googly eyes. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> Epic Pizza ain't calling itself, by the way. <laughs> and what are you? You are... This is beautiful too. I love everything about your fridge. I need to up my fridge game. Clearly. <laughs> cute little smiley right in the middle. Ugh. Claps for Joe. Claps for Joe. You got the vibes down. I bet every day that you go and you check out your fridge, you're a little bit happier. And that's the goal. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. What are you guys talking about? What are you... <laughs> Joe says, yeah, I bedazzled a whiteboard. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kendall says, I wish my fridge was metal so I could add magnets to it. What is your fridge made of that you can't... What? That's crazy. Uh, Kendall says, just remembering the scales being given away. Oh, the rainbow fish book. Yes. Seriously. Ugh. The scales are so good. Ooh, Joe says, ooh, scale shapes, but also ginkgo leaves. I love ginkgo leaves so much. And yes, all of the best everything. Also, there's talk of Benoit Blanc. <laughs> that was the most Benoit Blanc, oh my gosh, I have ever heard. Incredible. I want to get, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a cage and an accent. I would love to work on my accents. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just think of that episode of The Office where they're like, there has been a murder. <laughs> Southern drawl. Well, between Southern accents, there's so much variety. It's kind of like British accents where it's like, oh, the posh, the Cockney, the Welsh, the whatever. You know, like there are a million different ways of speaking. And uh, yeah, Southern accents have just as much variety. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> exactly. I love when language, especially like just individual words are broken down into the phonic, like how you say it. And it's so different. Like, what was it? Irish say uh, the way of saying something was like, if you with a... Uh, an American accent. I don't know exactly what an American accent would be like, but I guess a Pacific Northwest accent, which I have, uh, would be like, oh golly, I can't remember the example, but there's something like, you know, you put together two words where it's like eyes, butter. And then <laughs> when you say it in my accent, it sounds like what? But then you like think, no, this is an Irish word and then it actually works. But eyes butter doesn't work because I can't think of the actual words. Sorry if that makes no sense at all. Kendall says, I can only add uh, it to one part and there's hardly any room because our fridge is inset into our cabinets. That's so cool. Uh, so we only get six inches to decorate. <laughs> Imagine if Joe had six inches to decorate, it would all just be like filled. <laughs> Dark Harry says, OMG, fill it with miniature art. I love it. Ugh, you guys are funny. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so smaller tail, working better. Uh, we've got the fin size. we got that all idea out. Okay, so here's another idea I have for this piece. Is uh, this whole frame around the edge having a pattern basically not a repeating pattern necessarily but what should i what should i say about it uh let's get a big old brush in here not get too minute too fast but you see these like subtle subtle color differences here i need to clip Boop. so if we have like little like checkered areas i guess it would be called uh, and then within them, we could have a little bit of just illustration of, I don't know, something. It could be just like an actual pattern that we make, like the diamonds that we saw in that one piece. Oh my god. And then other ones might be like a, a T-Rex skull or something. This is absolutely accurate, obviously. <laughs> so then that would be like all over the outside of this and it could feel like a museum slash aquarium kind of dealio like we're looking through the window do you see my vision do you see it do you understand it do you feel it i feel you aquarium i'll steal you okay so that's the idea and then we've got our little onlooker obviously the only one at the uh the show and then our mega fish is going to take up most of our real estate and then and then and then what we have to do is talk about the uh the background of this fish that like what environment do we put in here do we make the plants massive do we make them small do we make other fish do we what do we do what do we do also another thing i probably want to do before i get much further into painting this is i make sure that the uh file size is big enough because i could see this one being really fun to get into a ton of detail on but right now I think my file is just five by seven, which is pretty small on the scale of things. Um, so I think I'll size up. What size should this be? Should we go for like 11 by 17? Make it massive. Usually I like to work much bigger than my intention of the thing needs to be. Like I know that I will print this at five by seven, but if in the future I decide I want a poster of it or something, then I want it to be big enough to print. Alessandra, what's up? 
saying, is it weird I'm eating seafood while you draw a fish? Haha. -ha. <laughs> I think you're on theme completely. So not weird at all. Also, Anna, I'm going to start streaming Fridays. Oh my gosh. Uh, 7 Eastern time. So that's 4 p.m. my time at Fridays. Okay, awesome. Uh, hope you'll be able to join. I don't know when I'm still figuring out Discord. Haha. <laughs> yes, please. I would love to see you streaming. That is so cool. I highly uh, encourage anybody to stream. It is a fun way to connect with people and also get work done. So, Alessandra, if you have any questions, you just let me know, of course. Uh, Kendall says, my computer is dying from the mural I'm designing for a client. It's 10 feet by 5.5 feet. Whew. Yeah, that's intense. I don't know how to handle like literal foot stuff. Like that's a lot. Anthony Jackson says, another streamer to the community. Congrats. Heck yeah. Streamer, stay strong. Yeah. <laughs> streamer strong. Okay, so uh, let's figure out what kind of size we should work at. Let's do... Let's just see what 11 by 17 would look like aspect ratio wise. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And of course you want to do this earlier rather than later so that you can uh like if i were to do this and the painting were done then we would lose some resolution and it wouldn't look as like crisp and nice but since i haven't really painted anything this is just basically like my rough uh i don't worry about losing anything like that so yeah we could have a little bit of extra room on the sides and when you're considering printing this on a postcard you need what do you call it? Like a quarter? No, not a quarter inch. A very small uh, margin on the e edges. But when you're thinking about painting these things, like she is really close to the edge. Look at her feet. They're like, whoa, whoa, that's too close. So uh, I probably want to shrink this down even more. Beep. Beep. Something like that so that we have some some room on the edges. And then even if it feels like too much room around the edge, you can always crop in at the end for like what you want to show. Say like you're showing it online or something and you feel like, oh, that's too much edge. I don't like how it looks. Then just crop in and then post it. But it's much better for just safety to have it. Just so you have it, you know, you have it. <laughs> what was that? I think it was uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia that did that. It was a hilarious bit where they're just like, oh, yeah, these fools, they buy too much uh, house and they can't pay it back. But, you know, that's them and we're us. So, yeah, just get more. Oh, wait, is it? I think it was actually Arrested Development that did that. Yeah, I think it was. We're like, to have it. Yeah, to have it. Just to have it. All right. So here's the boring work of just expanding this out. And also, eventually, I'll get somewhat straight sides going on these. <laughs> it's definitely work that I'm like, blah, blah, blah about wherever I put or whenever I do this kind of stuff, I'm just kind of sloppily doing it because I don't like spending time expanding canvases and such. I've definitely had projects, though, where uh, the client needs it to be bigger and I'm like, OK, I'm going to have to paint out the sides. And I will sit on that for so long being like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be the one to have to paint everything out. But if the client wants it, you got to do it. Okay, so we've got this. Now, I don't know if this will be my final solution for the sides. Like, you know how I wanted like a checker pattern? I could either, there are two options here. I could either make it just bigger checkers so that they're like massive segments that are still square aspect ratio but they're bigger or I could have a separation be like here's here's where the checker border is and then maybe out here it goes to like just a, a regular old wall maybe one color I think that's what I'll do just in case I do want to crop down in the final and uh, not have it completely cut off because it's so big. Hopefully that makes sense. 
Heather Gray, what's up? Says, am I the only one that is confused about uh, how to move artwork between Fresco, which I love, but then move it to Illustrator slash Vector uh, to license later? Ugh. I'm sorry, I don't have much to uh, give, like, in terms of advice on how to do that because I don't ever move it to Illustrator. <laughs> sorry. But uh, I'm sure there's some kind of uh, stuff in the forums about it. There's a lot of Adobe forums. If you Google stuff, it'll usually come up with your answer. But uh, if it is difficult, sometimes it just is difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Kendall says, scaling up files is so difficult. Cropping is way more fun. <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut it all off. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and I would never think of it as like fun. It's so funny that you put it that way because it's like, to me, it's just utilitarian. And honestly, most of the time... I don't really think about it where I'm like, oh yeah, I could crop this down. I could crop this up. It's like at the very beginning of a piece, I think about it and then never again. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, the corners will stay big. Like they're a massive tile that's like a big picture. And then the rest of it can just be whatever. Zwoop. All right, so just to leave myself a note, what I'm going to do is go in here and we've already got this side kind of drawn in, but I want to keep that idea of there's a frame around this window of patterning. And I don't necessarily want them to all be equally spaced. I want some of them to be longer, some of them to be shorter, stuff like that. I think there are things like this in zoos some places, right? Like little bricks that either decorate or tell a story about a, a certain area. Not sure. I am so excited though. I have a gift card to the zoo that I really need to use so that I can get a membership. And then go to the zoo and draw animals just every day. Every day of my life. Why not? If I could get internet good enough at the zoo, I would totally go on a drawing day with you guys. That would be so fun. Let me get the big corner ones. Also, what? Uh, this is totally random, I know, but uh, what shows are you guys watching? I think right now we're watching Blood of Zeus, which is an animated one on Netflix about a uh, Greek mythological story. Um, and then, let's see. There are several other shows, but I always forget what they are. Um, oh, we've been watching Willow. Uh... Last night's episode was something. Um, and then, what you call it? What is there anything else I can think of? Oh, we find <laughs> you guys will be so proud of James. He finally got to see everything everywhere all at once. Yay! Woo! Go James! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> If you don't know, I saw it months ago, and uh, he just finally got to see it. And now we own it, which is awesome. Our friends actually gave it to us. It's so funny because I kept on being like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy it. I'm definitely going to buy it. And then they're like, oh, uh, you don't have this movie, right? And we were like, no. And they're like, good, because we got it for you. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Joe says, James, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> he can feel it, I promise. <laughs> Heather Gray says, that's okay. You're very talented. Oh, thank you, Heather. Uh, also, do you have a basic size slash PPI you start at to give you flexibility later? I love just a, a good old eight and a half by 11 a lot of times. If I'm just sketching, I usually just pop that open as like a, a starting point. I usually only ever work at 300 uh, DPI. But, um, yeah, that's just me. There is no hard and true, like, right, wrong way, whatever. Heather also says, White Lotus, which I have been hearing a ton about. Uh, I need to get into it. Dark Hours says, My partner and I just started watching the new Witcher. Toss a coin to your Witcher. Oh, Valley Plenty. Uh, that's all I remember from Witcher. We didn't finish it. <laughs> Kendall says, I just started Wednesday and I have a K-drama called All of Us Are Dead, which is zombies and a J-drama uh, called First Love. Oh, ho, ho. Um, what was it? My friend Corinne recommended this one. I think it was Ghost Bride. Have you ever heard of that, Kendall? 
I wonder. Uh, I am not sure if it's a J or K drama. Honestly, I don't know much about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anthony Jackson says, I've been watching a lot of documentaries lately. I need more recommendations for movies and TV shows. Oh, heck yeah. Um, what kind of documentaries? Anything interesting? Alessandra says, I still uh, didn't watch it. <laughs> Lol, good for James. And is James feeling better? He is. He very much is. He got uh, the flu kind of recently and he is feeling much better. Although every once in a while he has this uh, phlegm in the lungs kind of thing. And oh man, it just sounds so bad when he coughs. But uh, other than that, he's feeling 100. So woohoo. We love to see it because man, I, I, I hate illness so much. It's so annoying and also just... I worry for my loved ones every single time. It's, ugh. Why can't we just live in a world where that's not a thing? But hey, you know, we take our lumps. Uh, and also, you just made me think of some more shows that we've seen. Uh, not completely. So we've finished Wednesday. So seen that completely. But then there's also uh, League of Their Own. Uh, we were watching and we binged like, I don't know, five episodes of it and then haven't gone back to it for a while. So I need to get back into that. Brian Davis Court. Hello. Are we related? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, and also Kendall says, I, I haven't seen Ghost Bride, but I'll look it up. Apparently it's based on a book that she read and I think Anthony read it as well. Which, by the way, Anthony, Corinne, and I, this was a very cute gift. So Corinne got us all a copy of the same book. And it's called uh, The House on the Cerulean Sea. And I love the tagline on the cover. I can't remember exactly the wording, but it, I think it says, like, you know, as a review from the New York Times or something, it says, like, a big gay hug. <laughs> And it's so cute so far. It's very fantasy based and uh, it's really fun and fast to read. So I think I'm on like chapter six right now. But anyways, I love that as a gift so much. So thank you, Corinne. Uh, <laughs> she can hear me right now for giving us all the book so that we can all talk about it after we read it. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> Dark Hour says, ooh, what was the name of it again? Uh, the House on the Cerulean Sea. Or in the Cerulean Sea? Cerulean is fun to say. Kind of hard, though. <laughs> uh, Anthony Jackson says, I watched uh, an... Oh, Avatar The Last Airbender documentary featuring the creators of the show. Really cool. That is awesome. Did you know that we have a signed copy of one of the Avatar The Last Airbender art books by one of the creators? Or were they both of the creators? I think it was just one of them. Uh, Anthony actually went to Powell Bookstore one day. That they were having a signing of the books. And he gifted us one. And that was really sweet. Um, but you just reminded me, Anthony Jackson. We're re-watching Avatar The Last Airbender in the background at night. Uh, usually what we do is after dinner, like, we both want to draw or do something. You know, like, I, I crochet and stuff like that. So we both uh, engage in our creative endeavors. And... Uh, we always need a background show where we're not like completely invested in it, but also it's a good vibe. And Avatar The Last Airbender is just always perfect. It's so good. It's so good that sometimes it puts the shows that we're watching currently to shame. <laughs> where we're, like we were listening or watching uh, Blood of Zeus, which is like by no means a bad show. But then you watch Avatar The Last Airbender and you're like, oh my gosh, they do everything perfectly. <laughs> Like, it's so, it's like a lightning in a bottle show where everything's just done so well. It's crazy. Hey, Joe found the book. Woohoo! Hey, you want to read it with us, buddy? <laughs> Get it now. Uh, read fast. <laughs> it actually is really fast to read. I've just been reading like a chapter before bed, which is helping me actually kick the habit of looking at my phone before bed. If any of you are in that cycle of like, oh yeah, I just like hop on TikTok for a while and like lose my mind. A uh, good way to get out of that is having a book and saying no to phone. So would recommend highly. Okay, so here is the idea. I think we've gotten enough of a note to give ourselves about how this is broken up. Also, Brian, uh, how are you doing today? How's Amy? How are the cats? Tell me everything. Is there any news about our little kitten friend? Does she have a forever name for sure? <laughs> uh, Brian, 
by the way, just recently got a new little, well, adopted, rescued, a new little kitty. <laughs> she is so cute. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Dark Hours says, honestly, if I see it in Canada, I'm going to get it. Uh, do it. <laughs> also, are you leaving like tonight? Ooh. Hmm. I'm uh, leaving very soon to go see James's parents for the weekend. And so I'll be even further from you, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, but we're driving south. So darn it. Uh, Kendall says, this is one of my New Year's resolutions. Been reading before bed to avoid phone addiction. I just high five to you. Yes, yes, yes. That is the way to do it. And let's do it together. Okay, we'll, we'll be accountability buddies and be like, hey. No phone, right? No phone? No phone, no phone. I just want to be alone today. No phone. Do you remember that song? I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Okay, let's let's get to work on this fish, because I think that's a fun part for the stream to see. Like, I could work on a million things in this piece, but I also want you guys to see the juiciness our apple shape here. It's so funny because I actually did make something apple shaped for a client recently. And so now I, I only have that in my mind as like the apple. <laughs> so if we make, if we make the, I'm trying to think of like the style that I want this to be in. I love flat artwork. One of the things that I realized recently, actually, it's just funny because I just put it in, um, is that what I love and I'm really enticed by a lot of times when I look at a painting is when the lighting isn't shown on the form of the thing, but rather in a direction of light. I don't know how to describe that better. Let's see. Um, say our character down here, instead of like if she was fully rendered, imagine she's like a person uh, that's like naturalistic you can see all the detail in her and all that stuff so uh there's the option of say like our, if our lighting was coming from upper right come come oh no my pencil just stopped registering <laughs> is it out of juice hello i was about to say something important Ah, I should always check the tip. Sometimes when uh, the pencil isn't working, the tip just isn't screwed on enough. Okay, so imagine that the lighting is coming from up here and you do like this really detailed rim lighting and you see it like bouncing off of her eye and like here's her, I don't know, the forehead, stuff like that. Anyway, it's like really detailed. That's one way of doing lighting, which is totally valid and fine. But what I find I really like is having the lighting be like whoosh, whoosh, like really intensely graphic like it's going across just a bigger thing it doesn't get into the details it's just like a very generalized lighting slash shadow so i'm trying to figure that out and like how to uh talk about it a little bit more concisely <laughs> but i really like that way of uh lighting and this wasn't the best example, but maybe on the fish it is an example because this whole side is like in shadow. See the subtle change of color and value? This whole side is in shadow. Now, if I were to like blend that up as like a firm edge, then it would look more like, oh, wow, that's kind of looking a little bit more realistic. But if I instead have like a really graphic, here's a line and it keeps going here let's do another these you know something like that and then it's much more directional it guides the eye and it creates this really like kind of flattening effect but by still showing a lighting change if that makes sense so thinking about that and moving forward i think what i want to do is probably have the fish all one color to begin with and then what we do is we put a bunch of different colors and textures and shapes on it as the scales. And then over that, we're going to do like a multiply layer so that we can have all those different colors and scales and everything. And then make one side of it darker or like even just a different color tone. It doesn't even have to just be darker. So that's what I'm thinking. Hey, Brian, Brian, Brian. Okay. Says, yes, she has more energy than any cat we have met. 
<laughs> we are heavily leaning towards Flojo after the sprinter. There's a sprinter named Flojo. That's really cute. <laughs> also, don't tell mom, dad, or Carol. We want to surprise her when she comes down. That is good to know. Okay. Uh, only you and James and lovely folks here know. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to, uh, you know, blow the story wide open. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> but I will definitely not tell you family, okay? <laughs> it's all good. Oh, man, that's going to be such a great surprise. Carol's going to flip. <laughs> uh, Joe says, graphic shapey lighting is the best. I agree. I love it. Uh... Joe says, I am so hyped for this. I often use this technique too, so I'm excited to see your take on it. I want to find this one image that really clarified it for me. I don't know if, oh, it may be on Instagram. That's what it was. Sorry, I'm so distractible today, but it is really fascinating to me to talk about this stuff, not just like drawing straightforward and being like, here's the thing, but actually talking about what we're drawing. I feel like that is in some ways much more valuable. Uh, 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 saved. That's where it is, I think. Do, do, do. No, it's not here. Where was it? Maybe it is Instagram or Pinterest, whatever you call it. This thing. All right, I'll take 10 more seconds to look, and if it's not here, then too bad. Is there a way to see most recent pins? I wonder. It would either be in color and light or children's book illustrators. Aha! I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. So this piece. Uh, let me see if I can. No, not that one. Zoop, 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 zoop. Okay. So I should have just shown you this before trying to explain anything. So this, you can see the directional light rays coming in. You can even see it being cut off here in the back of the cup. However, if you look closely at any of the forms, any of the, like, you know, these are complex structures, but they're not shown with any sort of form lighting. They don't have a, a firm or soft edge going around the, the curvature of the arm or the leg or any of that. It's flat. And I just love this. There's something about it that is so enticing to me visually. And then, of course, we have this depth shown with just a flat shadow behind. It's, I don't know, there's something about it, man. There's something about it, man. And then you have this beautifully detailed cup down here. And all it has is a splash of light in one area. And then all the rest, like, it's basically like two different cups were painted. And one area is just shown in this little triangle. And you get that, like, it's a 3D form. It doesn't need to be perfectly, like, rounded with a specular highlight and bounce light on the other side. All it needs is just that little bit of light to show the directional lighting in the piece and create a sense of depth. But the depth is all through flat shapes. It's so cool. I love it. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe is asking, who's the artist of this, Anna? Let's see if it's on here. Oh, it, it. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, it looks like it's just a puzzle <laughs> from Genuine Fred. Is that somebody's website? Oh, golly. Following unknown links. Dangerous. Uh, it looks like it's just a store, but I wonder if they have the art artist. Oh, here, Fred Artist Series. <laughs> Additional details. Show me. Aha! Designed by Yasmin Imamura. Yasmin Imamura. Awesome. We found it! Yes! We love to find the name. <laughs> and Ira says, clever perspectives. The artistic experience. You know? It's fun. It's all fun. Woohoo! Oh, Joe found their Instagram. Thank you so much. You are amazing. Okay, uh, I, I have to follow them. Will I remember? Yasmin. Yasmin. Here, let me real quick show you. Ooh, yeah, I love their style. Oh, oh, 
See, this is interesting. This one has much more form lighting than that other one I was showing you. So this is what I mean by form lighting, where it's like wrapping around the form. They still use a, a hard edge for everything, which kind of keeps it in the same design framework, I'd guess. But I, I still prefer the other method of lighting, personally. But that's just me. Yeah, definitely give it a follow. Beep, bop. Mm, boobity bop. So thank you. Oh, I'm already following them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that tells you I know uh, I know my design influence. That's when I'm like, yeah, there are. It's awesome. Oh, I'm already there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to merge this down. I'm going to create another clipping mask. And I'm going to start painting in some... Da, 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 some colors. I think what I'm going to do is just go ham with a really chunky brush. And then what I'm going to do is... Uh, dial in the shapes a little bit later. And I think one of the ways that I, I'm going to use I'm going to use a blending mode so that I can get many different varieties of color without completely changing the color underneath. So we're starting with this yellow. This like yellowy green. And I'm just going to go to a few different colors and splotch them around. Soft light every once in a while I'm like I don't know exactly what it's going to do. So I like to just splotch them and see what I like. Beep, beep, beep. So we can kind of do a rough version of what I'm thinking first with this method and then dial in the shapes as we go. I definitely also want to add a lot of texture on this one. I think it would be a really fun like texture study. It's not a color that I really like, but you know. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. We could have like a tail with, let's do some green. We could have some like stripes of different colors in here. Let's try out a few different blend modes and just see what that <laughs> rainbow fish and a half. I mean, come on. Uh, ooh, the light's not too bad. I feel like overlay is slightly stronger, which I like, but not overwhelmingly different. And then let's do, and this is not final by any means. This is just trying to figure out on the way there. Uh, we can have that shadow. Let's do... Kind of like that. I definitely want in the shadow to be influenced by the environment to have that green come back in. Now, definitely value-wise, it is blending with the uh, the the background, so I want to keep track of that and make sure I don't lose our fishy. But the background can also change in value very much, so don't worry about <laughs> exactly uh, like oh no, it's too it's too dark. Because other things can be lightened. It's fine. <laughs> rainbow arowana? <laughs> yes, rainbow arowana. Uh, let's see. Oh, your autofocus focused on the sofa. Hey, guys. Guess what? Those pillows are going to be replaced soon. <laughs> uh, I am so excited about that. Also, Rin's in the chat. What's up? <laughs> Everybody's commenting on my pillows. <laughs> Rin says, happy 2023, friends. Here's to another lovely year with you all. Happy New Year. I hope you're surviving the rainy, rainy, rainy Portland times right now. In fact, right now, I think we have gusty winds coming through. So uh, if you hear anything in the background, it might just be that being like against the windows. Joe says, I have a love-hate relationship with following people on socials only to realize I already follow them. On one hand, it's a compliment to my taste, but on the other, I don't get the serotonin of it. <laughs> oh no. It's all about that serotonin, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Rin saying replaced. Where will they go? What's, what's replaced? I, I missed it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the... 
pillows. Oh, that's what you're talking about. So the pillows, these guys, come on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, they're Totoro pillows. And okay, so they're actually Totoro shams over the world's oldest pillows. They are from James's college years, which is like, I think actually this year, it's been 10 years since we were in college. What? What? That's insane. A decade? <laughs> Anyways, okay, so, um, yeah, those are old pillows inside of there. Anthony gave me the gift, the wonderful, mwah, bountiful gift of a gift card to Kitchen Caboodle, which is a, like, home goods kitchen store. I need so many things for our kitchen, but also they sell pillows beautiful decorative pillows and i cannot wait to get some for that couch because those pillows I, I have to show you one sec i'm gonna grab them Jane. look at that look at that this is here's the pillow underneath this is like the old gray gross pillows but then also like what it's all coming apart they're falling apart at the seams, Totoro. <laughs> so, anyways. Ugh. That's the state of the union. <laughs> Jeff says, Anna, we gotta fix this. The other one's even worse. Like, a whole side is open. It's insane. Uh, <laughs> Jessica says, Anthony, awesome! <laughs> Anthony Jackson says, no, not the pillows. They have to be replaced. I'm sorry. They just have to. We have to find a place that we can, like, recycle them or something, because I've never tried getting rid of a pillow before, I don't think. Which is weird, because, like, I don't have all the pillows I've had in my life. <laughs> hey, and also, it's monkey paws time! Ooh, ooh, ah, ah! Everybody ready? Everybody excited? <laughs> all right. I should have shown you on this camera, because it's bigger. <laughs> so, this is a little break for us to take care of ourselves. I can already feel like my throat. I haven't talked this long or this loud in a while. <laughs> so it's getting sore. So, a reminder to drink water. Woo woo. And we're going to do a little stretch together. So, if you're ready, I'm going to walk us through it. We're going to start with putting our arms straight out in front of ourselves with our fingers to the sky, palms away, and then we curl them into what we call a monkey paw. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Good job. Good job. Has everybody been doing this while I've been gone? <laughs> Second pose, we're going to put our fingers to the ground, palms towards ourselves, and curl them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Then third pose, we're going to flip our palms away, fingers down, curl them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Good job. Good job. And then fourth pose, we put our fingers to the sky, palms towards ourselves, and curl them in once again. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Good job. <laughs> and if you're feeling any pain or discomfort whatsoever, give yourself a break. It's all good. I know that for some of you, it's probably been a while since you've done these stretches, so don't push yourself. <laughs> but also, we're going to uh, repeat these poses, holding for about a second each, around 10 times, so that we get a nice stretch in our wrists and our tendons. This is just a reminder to take care of your body because it does so much for you and we just need to do some preventative care to make sure that it can continue for as long as possible. Because I want to keep drawing and creating stuff with my hands forever. I'm probably going to be on my deathbed knitting. So yeah, take care of yourself. <laughs> I'm going to try to do the same. <laughs> Honestly, this isn't feeling too bad to me. I'm pretty good. But I have been doing monkey paws every once in a while. And also a lot of hand massaging. I remember I used to massage my hands as like almost like a nervous tick when I was talking to people for a while. Um, or as I've been learning more in the neuro spicy community, it's stimming. <laughs> uh, possibly. And the, the thing I like to do is rub the like the meat of your thumb right here and like rubbing it in an upward motion. That just, I love that. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. So I always do that when like talking to people, but I used to do it a lot more because I worked at a studio with people. So I would just like be massaging my hands all the time, all day. And I feel like that was probably the best time for my hands. <laughs> they were happy. Anthony Jackson says, Ryan Selby has been doing monkey paws on stream today. I wouldn't mind doing them a third time. Oh my gosh. You're just monkey paws king. I love it. <laughs> 
Joe says, possibly. Possibly. You get it? You get it? <laughs> Ooh, Rin says, same. And into the knuckles a bit. Ooh, yeah. I also, uh, right here, like below the elbow, that is like a very gentle, like don't push into it too hard, but like there's a there's a tendon along there that really likes being massaged. <laughs> very gently. And then when we're done, we just gently shake out our hands to loosen them back up. Then I'm gonna do some shoulder rolls to loosen those up too. Remember to unclench your jaw. And then I'm gonna do a few quick neck stretches. So Put your ear as high as you can on one side and then flip over to the other side and back again. Rin says, and yes, all I do is talk about stimming these days. <laughs> so many ways, so many ways. <laughs> that jaw and clenching was mighty animated. <laughs> you know, you got to go over the top with your expressions or like, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> From monkey paws to zombie jaws. <laughs> so, ooh, ah, it's just burr and ains. Brains. And then we're going to look as far as is comfortable to each side. Over here. And then over there. And over here. And over there. Good job. Woo, we did it. We stretched. We took care of our bodies. Great job, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> okay, let's jump back into it. Uh, okay, so. This is not working value-wise for me. I'm going to throw a black layer over everything so that I can say I filled every pixel and I'm done. <laughs> now I'm going to set it to color mode. And then we will see the black and white version. Which I think is being a little bit generous because that bottom side of the fish is definitely getting lost a little bit more than this is showing. Uh, I would say... I'm going to just finagle with it a little bit, see if I want to lighten this a touch, and then also see if I want to darken this a touch. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be too dark in the background. I like it being somewhat light and inviting. But what I really want it to feel is like a, I don't know, there's something so satisfying about water. It makes me think of jello. <laughs> like you want to bite into it when you look at a really good painting of water. And that's the goal. That's the goal is always make people hungry when they look at your artwork. <laughs> Uh, Rin says, I shall return. Going to Rin downstairs <laughs> for a moment to get a good stretch in. Do it. I love that. Michael says, hello. Hello. How are you, Michael? You having a good day? Top of the morning to you. Okay. So, uh, these are definitely not what I want the colors to be in, like, at the end. But it was a fun, it was a fun uh, way of mixing it up. And so what I want to do is create even more randomness with the colors. I think I actually might lower the opacity of this a little bit. I'm going to do another one over it and see if I can just add even more kind of random colors to it. And then we can get to work on actually filling in the colors. That's black. Don't need that. might even use this yellow. Ooh, yeah. When doing a lot of like textural colorful pieces, I find that random is really a good way to start, <laughs> which kind of feels counter counterintuitive as if uh, like, what am I looking at? What am I doing? There isn't really a solid grasp. However, I do find that like if you are having fun and just kind of there's there's like a you know when you're looking at one of those pictures where you have to blur your eyes to see the 3d effect of it i feel like there's something to do with that with painting abstract where you kind of have to let go of what you think things should look like to get a good abstract piece and feel like it is just appealing just baseline appealing before it needs to look like something representational and that is something that uh 
it takes a lot of like willpower and work to do that so i try <laughs> i try every once in a while to kind of tap into that less uh less intentional side of artwork i guess it's just intention in a different way instead of representational it's aesthetic And this isn't like, <laughs> this isn't perfectly aesthetically pleasing to me yet, but we're getting somewhere. I think slowly and surely we will find our way. And a lot of it will come down to the repetitious shape that we will create for the scales. Actually, this brush works pretty well for that. Wow. Wow. Yet another use for the rake grit brush. I love rake grit. That's cool. Although I have to remember, I want these middle ones to be slightly bigger, and then the ones at the ends to get smaller. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Sweet. I don't like this. There we go. Uh, also, Michael says, good day. Good day. Have we got another Aussie on our hands? Hello. <laughs> Uh, Kendall says you could look in, uh, also look at the luminosity. Maybe it's shifting the bottom part of the fish a different color. There was a way of doing that you showed me. Was it fill it with black and then switch it to luminosity? Was that the win? I can't remember. Uh, Kendall says I would say the blending is nice though. It gives the effect of being underwater. Ah, oh, that's good. Fill with 50% gray. Alright, let's try it. How do you get 50% gray on these things? I think, is it HSP? Yeah, there we go. Beep, bop, boop. And then we set it to luminosity, which I believe is at the bottom, right? Yeah. Whoa. That's so crazy. I actually really love the colors that it's picking out for the edges. That's very cool. And we're getting that rainbow fish effect a little bit. <laughs> if there were some like light pearlescence along with it, oof. Whoa. Okay, now it feels so different when you go back to this. It almost saps the color out of the water. Crazy. I think another thing that we're gonna have to add back into our little fishy. Fishy, why are you sleeping? Uh is some of this deeper gold. I know that it's oops, uh, underwater, so I don't want to have it be overwhelmingly a true color. I want it to be all impacted by the color of the water. However, I think that the depth is a little bit lacking. Also, another thing that um, I saw in the reference images of Arowana is that a lot of times at the, the ends of their scales, they'll be slightly darker which is a really cool kind of patterning detail for them. <laughs> Rinse is back, I am. <laughs> Kendall also says it gives a good uh, grasp of the main colors you have overall. Many a time I have had too high of a saturation color and that stands out where I don't want it to. Absolutely. I feel like maybe the outside could be a little bit less saturated and then the uh, as uh, of this piece. Like maybe that gold at the bottom will be gone over time. Maybe that'll be stronger. Yeah, see, it brings a little bit of depth to it that I think I like. Also, what color of eye should it have? Should it be gold? I wonder. Oops. Oops, oops. Oops, oops. I think I'll just start painting. I think I'm there. Get out of here, HSB. I don't want you anymore. That's way too much. All right, desaturating, lightening a little bit. Nah. Gotta be much more yellow than that to make it in this field. I wonder. 
Wonder, wonder, what's in a wonder ball? I think some really light yellow highlights should also go in here. Whole scales or just parts? I wonder. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Not sure exactly what face shape I want him to have or if I should add a mouth. What do you think? Mouth or no mouth? They've got very frowny mouths, kind of like a beta fish where it like starts at the top of their head and goes all the way down the side. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rin says dead eyes if <laughs> it's its currently sunny disposition. <laughs> Alessandra says dishes are washed, table is clean and set for tomorrow. Now it's time for tamarinds. Oh, heck yeah. And it's, uh, Alessandra says, it looks great. Thank you so much, Alessandra. You're being real nice. Thank you, thank you. Everybody's being so nice and so lovely to be back. Also, how is everybody's holiday break? Have any fun, exciting things happen? Any news I should know about? Any things you want to just talk about, chit-chat? Anything you want to brag about? <laughs> this is first and foremost a place for bagging so you know get it i think i'm just gonna freeform paint for a little bit because i'm feeling it i'm feeling this i think i want a little more like orangey Yeah, oranges with those like really light blues, I think, are the call. And remember, these are all supposed to be like a variety of colors. However, their main color should be that light yellow. So it's I'm hopefully not taking away from like the core light yellow that this was. I know that I always <laughs> I, my tendency is to get lost in color in terms of like I love color so much that I will go for a variety, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not something like, oh, I uh, I hate how much color I use or anything like that. But I know that my tendency is to go whole hog. So an example is in painting class in college, which is now a decade ago, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were all supposed to paint self-portraits. And Za, our painting teacher, who's an amazing artist, she told us to like lean into whatever colors we saw on our skin because skin is like one of the hardest things to paint it's got so many undertones in different places that change like the wind it's just all over the place so when i looked at myself i was like what color is that eh, it's got like a purple undertone and i would paint purple <laughs> it's got like a green undertone i would paint green and it was just so dramatic that mine came out like a rainbow i was like a lisa frank portrait and everybody else's were like skin tones <laughs> <laughs> and I remember everybody's being along the wall and mine just being like wah 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 and I was like okay I need to dial it back <laughs> Ryan says I missed something <laughs> oh is Zaw teaching at your school oh my gosh okay so uh, Rin is going to uh, PNCA which is a prestigious art school in Portland go Rin woohoo uh, but Zaw Vu if that is the same Zaw that you are learning from Zavu was my teacher at the Art Institute, and I would not be surprised if she's uh, teaching there because she's a fantastic teacher and the Art Institute is closed, so she should be teaching everywhere. Also, yeah, if you have any way to learn from Zavu, you absolutely should because she's a plethora of golden knowledge. It's She was absolutely one of my favorite teachers at the Art Institute. And also just a wonderful human being. I love you, Za. <laughs> if you ever see this, I love you. <laughs> also, Rin, that's funny because I just remembered uh, at our last years at AI, Za... Um, oh, look. <laughs> Rin says Za teaches character design at my school. I will double check. You have to get in her class. Oh, my gosh. 
I haven't met Zaba. Everybody who has her loves her. Yes. Yes. She is the teacher. Go go learn from her. <laughs> I'd say her and David Hone. You got to go learn from them at PNCA. Uh, which David Hone was also a teacher of mine. Um, but what was I going to say? Za. Teaching. Oh, uh, <laughs> near the end of our schooling, Za was looking for portrait reference. And so James and I both sat in for her. She dressed us up in fun clothing. I think, I mean, it was kind of basic. Mine was like a collared white shirt. And I, I think James had a hat. Did he? I don't know. Anyways, she took pictures of our faces from like a bunch of different angles. And for years, people have been painting our faces. <laughs> And it's so funny because I met some students from AI before it closed and they were like, hey, I know you. And I was like, I don't think I've ever met you. But they were like, oh, I painted your face. <laughs> so funny. Oh my gosh, Rin, confirmed. Same Za. Oh my gosh, you have to learn from her. She's fantastic. <laughs> Rin says, I checked our course catalog. Uh, she's also a oil painter. So if there's ever a painting class with her, take it. You can borrow my oil paints. <laughs> that is very exciting. I'm excited for you. I want you to learn from her. And can I audit classes? Because I, I still, there's so much to learn. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. Okay, this and then that. Oh, what if he has like a little blue, like a uh, cheek, cheek blushy. <laughs> Cute. Now let's bring one of these oranges and give a little blushy blush. It's got to be cute. If we're not making cute stuff, then what are we doing? So here's a little mouth. What do you think? What do you say? What are you buying? What are you selling? Let's put a little bit of like a highlight to make it a little less lifeless. Come, come. There we go. <laughs> Is that weird? Maybe. Especially because we're doing graphic stuff. We should make it a whole line. <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to draw out some scales. Draw them out. Mm -hmm. Make this one small. This one big. I think around here probably should be the biggest. So we'll make them real big. <gasps> Are those too big? What do you think? Hmm. Not sure. Eh, just keep going. It's fine. If I change my mind later, I'll change my mind later. Beep. Okay. Whoop and a whoop. All right, now I'm going to start sizing them down a little bit. And these don't have to be like the final skills that I do. It's just, uh, kind of want an idea of what I'm going for so that I can start painting in here and be like oh yeah I want this to be more of this color less of that color and then maybe start into some mark making which mark making is always fun I feel like uh, I usually try to save it for the end of a piece to really start loving what I'm like the marks that I put into it if I have to redesign something later and get rid of what I made then it kind of hurts my heart if I made beautiful marks. However, there's also the uh, the idea that like you're holding yourself back from creating sometimes. 
because you're waiting for like the go ahead to be like, oh yeah, this is good enough to keep going. And I feel like sometimes that just slows me down. So what I want to do is follow my flow. If I feel like doing something, I do it. And giving myself plenty of time to back out and be like, okay, do I really want to start mark making right now? And sometimes the answer is no. And that's okay. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Hey, Isabelli says, I, uh, hi, I'm from Brazil. Hello, obrigado. <laughs> I feel like the most times that we get uh, people coming in and saying where they're from, it's from Brazil. So we love having you. Alessandra says, lol, uh, what is the accent going on there, Anna? I don't know. Did I use an accent? <laughs> Rin says, love this lil fish. <laughs> oh, Yeah, this is the piece we're uh, painting, Isabelli, and... Uh, it is a little fish, just a little tiny one. <laughs> but as I'm painting this, uh, I'm just trying to consider exactly what kind of piece I, I imagine this to turn out to be as well. And it's not exactly what I imagined, which I mean, it's not a bad thing if it's not exactly, but I do want to keep in mind like what my goal is so that I can somewhat closely hit it especially whenever I think like I, I always want to grow my portfolio and have it be closer to what my goal is of making and we went through a bunch of stuff earlier in the stream talking about like the the goal of this piece and I don't think it's necessarily uh there yet so maybe what we should do is bring up a little bit more of that reference uh, I've got Yaz illustration just to remind you some of that flat textural look that I love uh, and imbuing a little bit more of my work with that I think would definitely benefit it. So I'm going to bring up a piece that feels right for this. Oh hey, here's one with a fish. Look at that. We've got a little fishy guy here. Very like minimal in color, but much more uh, the simplistic mark making. Like instead of it being just the fin and here are lines as they they seem like they are on the actual fish, it's much more decorative. Like these flowing lines are pleasing to the eye. And then we've got a little highlight uh, scales. <laughs> That's what they're called. I can paint fish and talk. Excuse me. And just to remind you, this is Yaz, uh, Yasmin Imamura, and they are amazing. Uh, I think another thing about their work that I love is the uh, texture. And I know a lot of that can come from painting traditionally. So that is another thing to consider. Like if I really love this piece, I would love to make a traditional painting of it. Uh, so that's another thing to consider is like, is this a study for a traditional painting? Because that's cool too. Oh, well, Isabelle says, very good your drawing. Thank you so much. It's very sweet of you to say. I am working on it. <laughs> I still, I feel uh, mixed feelings about this one where it's like, I really like the concept, but I know that it has so much potential for looking a certain way that it's almost like... Uh, I'm disappointed when it doesn't look that way yet. But I loved Yasmin's uh, reference there, so I'm going to try to kind of keep that in mind. It's like a flowing line, possibly. Like, oh yes, this goes this way, this goes that way. And also finding ways to add texture because I know there are so many great brushes in here and the more I use the more I can add that feeling of handmade quality which I know we're all trying to get <laughs> it's like the ongoing pursuit of every artist is to try to find that handmade feeling I 
I think part of that is showing love to every part of the piece. So you're not just like, oh yeah, this is, this is my favorite part to paint or something. It's literally every part of this gets your full attention. I like these flowing lines a lot better than just the straight lines that I had before, so at least that's good. Adds a lot more of this like kind of organic and wild feel a little bit. Come, come. There we go. Okay, okay. I know that I don't want those lines on top in the end, so I'm trying to figure out what would be a way to kind of get rid of those, but also keep the depth that they they produce. So maybe just like the underside is a little bit thicker and then the top part goes away. That's one solution. I'm sure there are many. Another thing I find helpful is, uh, especially with a larger like subject like this, is having little test areas where you just test out a way of rendering on certain parts, but not necessarily the entire piece all at once. Because if you did the entire piece, it feels like you put a bunch of work into it and you don't want to uh, negate that by starting over. However, if you do just a little test area, it not only gives you a small area to work on so you can just do it quicker but it also opens you up to the possibility of saying okay that test didn't work out the way i wanted it to let's try again <laughs> joe says "Ooh, just imagining the texture you can get from the brush if you used acrylic gouache i know seriously acrylic gouache is just mm, so good so very good let's try uh real quick maybe yeah we can try a multiply of just a texture brush over this I wonder, hmm, 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 hmm. Let's try the go go brush real big. Just see what it brings. Yeah, there's some like stipple dotting in there. You see that? Let's make it a lighter color. So it's just barely there. And we could even make it colorless and see what that does. Whoa. I think on overlay, that's the way to do it, is like if you used overlay and a 50% gray, it shows up as basically, oh, that's like the noise trick. It's like uh, slightly off of 50% gray will lend uh, texture without color, I think it is. Let's see here. Is there anything? I'm trying to see if there's a difference. I think I may have hit it perfectly. Hmm. Not the kind of texture I want. So let's delete that. Let's go looking for brushes. That's always a fun thing to do. Uh, I'm thinking like exactly what Joe said. I would love a acrylic gouache kind of feel from this. I think Kendall says loving these colors. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Painting. What you got? What you got? Soft acrylic. Let's see. Hmm. Not sure, not sure. If I were painting this with a brush, I would definitely go scale by scale. And I'd have a hard edge. So let's look for a hard edge. Old bristles. Old oh, bristly! Yeah, it's a little too wild. Natural brush. So natural. I like that. 
That's not too bad. Let's do a test patch of just painting these in like as a singular color. The idea though is I don't want to lose the, uh, what do you call it, like how it's multi-dimensional because it's got multiple colors. I want it to feel like it's got that dimension. Maybe I just need to mm, lower the opacity. Is that a way to do it? Do, do, do. Transfer. Oh, sorry, I'm looking into <laughs> the depth. Ooh, that's another thing. I really love when, uh, in the style of painting, that you have a solid color, say like this blue, greeny, whatever this is, and then you use another color, let's say this darker orange, and you scratch over it, but leave like gaps, so it's got little, little peekaboos of other color. I do love that style. Usually done with like a, a pencil or something like that, but just saying. Anyways, okay, so with this test, not completely in love yet, but we'll figure it out. Rin says, the voice is Anna. Much love. <laughs> uh, and also, oh, how I've missed having time to hang out here with you all. Same. Joe says, you could duplicate and shuffle them a little to the left. Duplicate like this layer. To the left. I'm confused. Tell me what you're thinking. Use words. <laughs> Uh, I think having the hard shadow under the bluish one really works. Oh, good. Uh, Alessandra says, I know this is not a uh, cod, but oh my god, this looks great, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> You're on. Uh, Joe says, so the one on the far right, I mean, nudge it a little bit so it's offset, like if it was screen printed. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So the one on the far right. Are you talking about this layer? I'm not sure. Uh, but then you nudge it just slightly. So it's offset like it's screen printed and then do it as an adjustment layer. Or like a uh, blend mode, I think is what you mean. Right? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Kind of like it as overlay. But you can't really see through it very much here. The opacity down. I always mix them up. Yeah, totally. It's a uh, blend mode. And then Rin says, if we're going there, Anna, you could dab a little bit of paint on one part. <laughs> I don't know. I'm floundering over here. <laughs> uh, I can't work Arowana into there very well. <laughs> Are you, you want to see the painting? Uh -huh. Joe, I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't know if it's working on this. But the idea of uh, having something slightly offset. So, like, if we were to do lines. Mm -hmm. No, maybe, like, shoop, shoop. And then duplicate. Shoop. Slightly offset. And then what if they were like completely different colors, like, uh, ooh, luminosity, because then you get this like slight edge where it's like a chromatic aberration. That's cool. I like that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Joe says, Aro wanna make the scales look good? <laughs> uh, Ren says, something is fishy about this stream. Oh. Joe says, maybe have another look at the coin scales again. Uh, and Rin says, we can uh, be of no help. <laughs> you must fi find your 
for yourself. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. I thought you were gonna say like find your own way, but it's Finn. <laughs> uh Joe says, yes, get that chromatic aberration. Heck yeah. Uh what was it? For Into the Spider-Verse. The frames where they have things out of focus, they use chromatic aberration a lot to make it look like it's out of focus, but it's actually in focus. It's just offset. So your eye treats it as like a blur. Uh, very cool. But I would want to use that, yeah, in certain areas, maybe not all of them. These are also too dark, so... Or maybe, what if I... Opacity downed. Oh, that's cool. I like that color. Okay, so... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Alessandra says, Can you believe a scam call interrupted your stream? <laughs> I'm watching this on my phone. I mean, come on! The rudeness! <laughs> Kendall says, I love Into the Spider-Verse. Same. So good. Brian says, we're sure feeling the puns here. Feeling eeling by the way on tiktok has everybody watched the uh eel eel pit guy i love that so much so there's a guy who made an eel pit in his old cistern and it's basically like a room aquarium a room-sized aquarium it's so cool the whole bottom of it is just water and he has like little stepping stones that he can go on and he's got a bunch of eels down there and he named them a bunch of punny names ah it's so good <laughs> Alessandra says they have been so shellfish. Oh my gosh, I almost missed that one. <laughs> shellfish. You get it? You get it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're all so clever. I was going to make that into a pun, but I couldn't because I'm not. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm really not liking its eye. I'm going to just merge everything we have so far, I think. Merge. 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 Everything except for the uh, multiply layer. Get thee gone. Get thee to a nunnery. Whoops. I'm on the original. Can't go outside the lines. I also don't know about this being like lit as if it's top lit. That would be cool if we could get some lighting on the back that looked like water, you know, the light through the water, how it refracts and has that really cool patterning. But we'll save that for another time. <laughs> Brian says, stop flippering out. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. That one was a stretch. <laughs> uh, okay. I really want to find a good pat uh, texture brush. I want it to be interior texture, not just exterior. Ah, huh, like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to set it to multiply. Oh, it overlaps with itself and gets darker. Dangerous, those brushes. I hate it when it does that, honestly. <laughs> you know, it's like you pick up the brush once and you've ruined it. Ooh. Well, it doesn't look like it's doing it everywhere. Just some places. Okay, sure. What do you think? doesn't have to be this color or uh, value. I just want it to have to be extra. I think what it needs is to be multiply. However, um, I want it to have hello. Whoa! Oh no! Yay! 
Yeah, that's cool. Does it even have it anymore? Am I crazy? It looks like so much of the texture got lost. Maybe we just need to use this brush to paint. <laughs> Joe says, ooh, I think that really did something. Rin says, I just double checked my work schedule for this upcoming semester and I work at a desk job where I can tune into your stream during usual stream time. That is so cool. Alessandra says, this is enough fish puns. Uh, you need, <laughs> wait, this is enough fish puns. You need a t to tuna it down. <laughs> Brian says bow to the master. <laughs> uh, you know, like the bow of the ship. Yes, it was bad. <laughs> I'm going to give you a stern warning for that one. Ah. Rin says, it's a job where I wait for people to come to me to check out art related tech. So there will be small interruptions, but still I can tune in. I'm so happy. That is the best kind of job, especially while well, in school. So you can also do your homework, hopefully, while you're there. That is, that's top choice. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see what it looks like if we just paint with this one. Is it wild? Maybe a little smaller. Mm, not bad, not bad. I don't think it's horrible. I feel like... I might have to explore off stream to figure this out because I I feel like, I don't know, there's something tickle in my brain about this where I'm like, I really want to find the right way to render this because there's so much potential of it being really cool. Like, I love the design. I love the colors we've got going. I just don't love the render quality yet, but we will find. We will find. Okay. You know, I used to do this technique way back in the day where... Uh, favorites here we go Ooh. I would paint a piece and then use a piece of paper a picture of a piece of paper wow say, say that 10 times fast <laughs> to overlay on top of it and it would give a texture of paper and it would just add a lot of texture tactile kind of feel to it now I think the reason that I stopped doing that is it didn't really feel like it was well done as in it added texture but not necessarily exactly where I wanted or how I wanted it so it felt a little like I could do this better and over the years obviously I've been chasing the handmade quality uh but I don't know maybe I'm just at a, a point where I'm like trying to find the next level of it Rin says, yes, exactly. I have a second job writing for our Career Center's newsletter. Congratulations. But the tech job is definitely a lovely break where I can decompress and work on my projects as needed. That is awesome. I am so proud of you, Rin. You're doing the stuff. Alessandra says, upstairs in the design building, Rin. Lol, why are you uh, copying me? Haha, -ha, I did the same stuff you're doing now. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, birds of a feather flock together now and forever. La 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 la. All right, I'm going to work a little bit on the designs of these guys just to get some ideas out there. So throw me your pitches for what kind of designs would be in a zoo slash museum slash aquarium. I'm thinking some like seaweed could be cool. Like, ooh. Botanicals, fossils, fishies. Fishy, why are you sleeping? And I'm just gonna do like some quick little ideas in here so that it's not like taking all the time in the world, but getting the ideas out. Maybe like a tr turtle shell? Or is that a stone? That's a gem. A finely cut gem. Mixed in, yeah, with these like patterns and stuff, I think it would be cool. Oh yeah, I forgot. I could just do like <laughs> diagonal lines. 
let's do some of those. Like it just fills in these areas. Oh, here, let's do this darker area here. Ooh, a trident. I like that. What kind of stuff, if you were looking at, say, this was like a cover of a book, would you look at and be like, ooh, that's a cool detail? I guess if it was a cover of a book, it would have something to do with the story, huh? We're making up our own story. Delilah's Day at the Aquarium. <laughs> Digging equipment, e.g. shovel. Oh, good idea. Oh my gosh, you guys have so many ideas. Holy heckers. Uh, seashells. Top shelf, yes. Starfish, coral, shells, bubbles, bones, oyster, clamshell, horseshoe, crab, uh, seahorse, pearl oyster, fossil fish, trident, teeth, digging equipment, shovel, coral, swords, swords, <laughs> trophies, sword, fish, uh, 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 references to Animal Crossing. Yes, I love it. Okay, let's do all of those. <laughs> Just all of them. All right, so starfish. We're gonna do a clamshell. I'm gonna do a, over here, a shovel. shovel that is maybe pointing at something what could it be what could it be what could it be a little starburst uh, i'm gonna do a mollusk like that uh, let's see. Ooh, arrowheads. Not exactly sure how an arrowhead is shaped. I know that they have like a lot of different, I think they flare out at the bottom sometimes. Uh, <laughs> pick brushes. If we're going to do a trident shovel direction treasure chest. Oh my gosh, that's so clever. I think. Yeah, so we've got trident, we've got shovel. So over here, is this a treasure chest or is this? Sure. <laughs> Perfectly rendered. Beautiful. Gotta have the lock. And then over here... Maybe we'll do another one of these, and then we'll do a key. Obviously, we can make the key all sorts of designs, have stuff in there, too. A human skull, obviously gotta have it. Uh, let's, yeah, I mean, why not? Are you okay, James? James, are you okay? Okay. You made it a startled sound, and I was like, oh gosh. Uh, underwater bust of guy that was left to sink in Atlantis. Oh my gosh. Uh, JK, it's too detailed. <laughs> I mean, we could make this a, a wall size mural too, right? Just work at your 10 foot, 5 5 foot, like, sizes. Uh, swords, coral, teeth. Fossil fish. <laughs> I guess, yeah, like a, a, what do you call it? Like a skeleton of a fish up here. Zoop. That's how they go, right? <laughs> um... 
I think a coral that goes like, oh, maybe mm, if it came in from the side, it would be cool. You know, those long kind of finger like corals. And then, oh, seahorses and bubbles. You guys are so clever. Seahorse generally goes like this, right? They have those big bellies. I remember drawing a seahorse once upon a time. It's been a while. Wait, no, it's not on their head. It's like back here. Oh, wait, no, is it? Yeah, I think it curls forward. Right, right, right. Am I crazy? I think it does curl forward, but they still have the big bellies. All right. Uh, bubbles, bones. I think I got it all. Pick brushes. We have a human skull. Uh, let's see. I was going to say fish bones, but I was not sure if it was too morbid. <laughs> oh, it's not morbid at all. Not when you're at like a zoo slash museum, you know, they're all about them fish bones. <laughs> Sharks. Should we put a, a shark next to our giant arowana? Be like, for scale, here's a great white. <laughs> anemone, anemone. Ooh, a magnifying glass is a good one. Oops, that one's the dark. Let's do. What if we put like uh, a bug underneath this so that you can see? Like, see, it's a magnifying glass. I've had a lot of ideas for magnifying glass related artwork and never really made it. Is that weird? <laughs> Alessandra says, lol, Anna, say anemone three times fast. Anemone, anemone, anemone. You're my anemone. Anemone now. Anemone, anemone, anemone. Everyone says, Anna, Anna, money. <laughs> Anna, Anna, money. <laughs> That's money, honey. <laughs> Anem anemones look like, oh, woo, 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 right? Is that what they look like? Maybe there's a little clownfish. Wait, the clownfish has to, like, sneak out of here looking like, hello? Don't you come near me or my son ever again. That's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> Somebody's gonna look at this and be like, what the heck? Oh yeah, I forgot we have diamonds in here. Cause diamonds are forever. There was a special or documentary or something uh, that we watched on Bond songs, like James Bond, the songs that start all the movies. And how they're kind of, it grew into a lore almost, where it's like, oh yes, if you do a Bond song, you've made it. It's like a high honor. I mean, once Adele's done it, right? It's pretty much honorable. The Honorable Adele. Let the sky fall. Let it crumble. Okay, an enemy, a book. A... That is brilliant. Now, how do I? I don't know. Excuse me. I was burping. A uh, book. A book. Ooh, let's do a silly looking fish with like teeth that come up. Mm. Yes. Meh. It's like, Wah. and then it goes. Wah, 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 wah. There's a shark fin. Hoo ha ha. 
is what happens when I make a fish. <laughs> looks totally accurate, right? Yeah, looks great. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do another joop joop joop. Uh, joop 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 joop. Let's do a pickaxe. Should it be sideways or vertical? Let's do it right here. Just watched uh rewatch Zoolander last night. I think I got the black lung pop. I don't know what a pickaxe looks like, clearly. <laughs> uh thingy? Uh what? Sure. This is a pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> Rune says, I love it. I love it. Alessandra <laughs> uh, uh, says, We don't stand tall, lol. <laughs> we don't stand tall. <laughs> also, Anna, I messaged you on Discord when you're done with the stream. Uh, if you could read it, that would be great. I will try to read it when the stream is done. And that will be great. <laughs> uh, what if it. Uh, a flower is that too much should it just be like it'll be like wavy little leaves drifting in the fray yeah by the way this is a t-rex skull if you don't get that then like too bad for you <laughs> <laughs> A snake, perhaps? Let's do some like overlapping shenanigans. Yeah. Wait, no, that's not the right way. Diamonds are forever. Hi, I'm a little snake. What's your name? And then... Leaves, but like fossil leaves. We can do up and down, up and down. Does that sound good? Beep, 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 beep. I think. Uh, <laughs> Rin says a little tidal wave design. Okay, okay. You're so clever. You're so clever. Like a oh woo, a oh woo, a oh woo, a oh woo, a like that, like that. Yeah. Oh heck yeah. Every every aquarium slash museum slash zoo has that, right? Right? <laughs> uh, Alessandra says, Anna, I have Skyfall, James Bond movie DVD, and I love that Adele song. It is good. Adele is amazing, always. Rune says, keys, because treasure chest. I got one key up here. There's our key. There's our key and there's our chest. Are you going to unlock it? I think I need to get a cool like front view chest going so that it's like graphic like all of these. I think they're all pretty much flat front view. Brian says this is great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Rin says, oh, what's inside? A uh, gem and a bone. This is bugging me. Uh, let's see here. Should the big corner ones be big or should they not? Whoa, that's not the right color. Diamonds are forever. I can't stop, sorry. And then it would be like a plesiosaur or something up here. <laughs> that's a plesiosaur. Don't doubt me. Hmm? Eh? Oh, uh, uh. And then, uh, this is a, 
Ichthyosaur. Here's its snoot. It's long. And it's got some fin, finny fin fins for my chinny chin chin. A crab! Oh yeah, horseshoe crab was one of them. We could do a little crabby crab right here. And then another down here that's a horseshoe crab. Have you ever seen a horseshoe crab? They're pretty amazing. Uh, should we do the underside so you can see all its legs? <laughs> that's my attempt at a horseshoe crab. <laughs> um, Rand says, let me grab the magnifying glass to inspect the bone for hidden messages. <laughs> Rand says, Anna, this is totally on topic. I'm very excited. What's on topic? What even is the topic? I don't even know. This is a fish. Look at it. Accurate. Uh, let's do... Have you seen the new cartoon saloon film My Father's Dragon? I have. I watched it and I enjoyed it. And I also read the books as a kid. So I enjoyed it even more. <laughs> uh, I think actually what I want to do is break this one open. Tear down this wall! And just continue this guy up. I felt like there were too many squares in a row. Hey, and Rin, if you get a, a class from uh, Za, you will understand this. You gotta feel it. That's what Za always says. You gotta feel it. She's got the best, worst British accent I've ever heard. Okay, so uh, what's this long boy going to be? Bubbles. You can just make it simple. Bubbles. When they're underwater, they can get like kind of amorphous and weird. Like the uh, opening of uh, Pokemon 2000. The scene where the bubbles are going up through the water and Mewtwo starts talking. And then they have that like Meep! sound. Oh, such a good movie. Uh, Brian says, Kraken? <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> I love it. Uh, also, Rin says, I looked up Arowana and their babies only to have a plethora of Arowana show up with their babies coming out of their mouths. Okay. Okay, nature, you scary. <laughs> Kendall says, uh, did you, didn't you do an art thing on stream for My Father's Dragon? Yeah, I actually uh, did like my reimagining of the uh, cover of a book for My Father's Dragon. I think I would go back. I know. I don't think I ever finished it. <laughs> Classic Anna. But um, I think that I would do it a slightly different way if I were to do it again. So we should just revisit that. What do you think? What do you say? Shrimp? Oh, that's the wrong color. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe that's a sign. Uh, I'll do a rotund fish with a little tail. <laughs> His name is Albert, and he would like to be your friend. All right, we've got some ideas in there. They ain't going nowhere. I do want to fix this chest, though. This chest is bugging me. Oh la la. It's got to be a straight on chest. It's got to be a big padlock in the middle. Oh, I think it should be arched. Yeah. And then uh, we could have like a tapered bottom like that and then have like a rim around the edge. That's better, I think. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, what? We're still missing. What? 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 <sighs> okay. One more thing. One more. One more time. Uh, let's do. Hmm. Oh, let's just do another. Diamondes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now we've got it. Now we've got it. All right, then to make this feel a little bit more like a room, we're going to give it like a... Actually, I should probably just go along the whole bottom. A... What do they call these? Baseboards? Where the wall connects to the floor. Whoa. The windows just shook from a gale of wind. The gusts. They're crazy. Crazy and amazing. And I do think that this floor is distracting. So what should we do instead? Maybe like a light but dull orange. No, that's too boring and not light enough. Nope. Come now. Don't toy with me. Whoa. You're toying with me. I said don't do that. Okay, there we go. Nope. I can't even erase correctly. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh... Oh my gosh. Uh, Rin says, Anna, this just made me think of the crocs in my father's dragon. Oh, I love that croc. Yes, that design. All just clambering over each other and over the parent, the little babies. Yes. Baseboards. Aye. And the top is the crown molding, I believe. Yes. And I also saw, golly, what was it called? There was a method of roofing where instead of the, the or not roofing, ceiling? This? Okay, so when a wall meets a ceiling, usually it's this sharp corner, but with this, they curve it. And it's really cool looking. It creates this kind of feeling of a cap on the room. And then most people, when they're painting, like they want the walls and the, the ceiling to be a different color, it's like below where the curve starts. So you have just this like layer and then this curve up to the ceiling. And I don't know, there's just something so charming about it. I really like it. Okay. Uh, I don't like this color either, but let's see if we make it warmer. Make it feel a little better. Oops. Come, come. Nope. It's just a pink floor. Uh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. What if? Is a show on Disney Plus. <laughs> uh, I do like another. Is that just weird? I don't know. I think that's the best it's going to be right now. But with that, uh, I'm going to call it for the day. I have so many things that I want to do to explore this piece. I really, really love the bones of it. Uh, so I want to keep that going throughout and make sure that it's something that feels like the right uh, technique is used throughout, <laughs> basically. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alessandra. Alessandra says, I gave you a thumbs up on YouTube. That's very sweet. Kendall says, speaking of Disney Plus, Strange World. I have not seen that yet. Have you? Also, uh, Kendall says, love where this piece has gone so far. Thank you. I really love it, too. I think it's going to have a lot of personality in the end. Uh, one thing that I do want to switch up right now is I want to, right at the end here, just try out some brightness on this. If that was maybe below this. Hmm. Yeah, I think that pops a little bit better. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So I think that this is a really strong start. We didn't really work on the background much today, but we worked a ton on the, uh, the, what do you call this? The frame of the aquarium. And then also, or like our window into it. I like to believe that this arowana is so massive that they give it acreage of water to explore and that you can see it from a bunch of different sides, but that it's very 
very vast it's world inside of there so that it's not this tiny little aquarium for this giant fish um another question i have is do you think that we should add more fish to this maybe for some scale and also what kind of background elements should we have large plants small plants rocky things i believe they live in kind of pond environments so i think there's going to be significant fall off in the water regardless like this isn't cl crystal clear water this is more green pondy color or uh, water and so uh we can have just implied background details and things like that um and then other than that i will work on mr fishy making him exactly what we want him to be because there's so much potential and like all those pictures that i showed you i want each of them to apply to this piece in its own way so i will definitely do that and see you next week on Wednesday after I get back in town. So thank you so much for being here. And until next time, remember to get vaccinated, get boosted. <laughs> it's been forever since I've said that. Uh, but still, stay boosted because, man, people are getting sick left and right. And you should keep yourself safe. And I will see you again very soon. Be kind to yourself and to others. Remember that you are loved. And I'll see you later. Bye! Oh, I gotta reach for this. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> now it's time for the after show. Yeah, that's right. I didn't forget that the mic's on. <laughs> uh, uh, Kendall says, Mr. Fishy. <laughs> that's his name. Rin says, baby fish would be lovely for scale and for movement. I agree. I think that movement is a huge one. We can even add like little flow lines in the water, possibly, if it doesn't distract too much. Uh, Brian says, by Anna, as in, I made this, which is true. I did. <laughs> but I know you're saying bye. Have a great night. Alessandra says, thanks, Anna. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. Kendall says, thanks for the fun stream. After party time. Oh, yeah. And Alessandra's already dancing. After party. Oh, yeah. That's another thing we've been watching is uh, Samurai Jack. And they have scenes where there's, like, intense rave parties. And it's always hilarious because... Jack sticks out like a sore thumb. But then he learns to amalgamate a little bit, you know? He's a good guy. Oh, I am going to make something delicious for dinner. I hope that you do too. Oh, and drink so much water. Again, this is like more talking than I've done in a month, so. <laughs> oh. Kendall, perfect. Yes, a shameless plug to come see Adobe Live tomorrow where you'll see my face. So Kendall is going to be hosted by Ryan Selvi on Offset tomorrow. It's very exciting. I believe it is 12.30 p.m. Pacific time here on Adobe Live. So definitely to catch it because uh, Kendall is an amazing creator and I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to make together. Kendall says I have to finish gathering a few things for Adobe Live and then dinner. You know, it's going to be awesome regardless. Don't overwork yourself, though. <laughs> all right. I'm going to hop over to the Discord and I hope to see you all there. Have a good night.